Hi, this is Dean, and this is a practice video for the um, B part of the 3-8 Allegro uh, by Vivaldi in book five of the cello Suzuki books. And this is found on page seven of the book. Um, this is the um, Allegro that starts... <laughs> the one we're talking about and um, this uh, this piece has lots and lots of diminished chords in it and a normal chord is one where you have uh, you have a root a third and a fifth the fifth makes a really nice sound uh, and now and then we have a diminished chord where we have to go back a half a step from the fifth and then when we play the root and the fifth together, it sounds like this. Kind of a nasty sound. Uh, so if it doesn't sound good, it's right. Uh, and that occurs all over the place in um, this movement. So let's get into it. Uh, it happens right away at measure number 29. We've gone this far. And there we have a diminished chord. Um, we have a, an A sharp and a C sharp. And normally we would then take our first finger across and play this. And that would be the, the really nice A sharp minor chord. But instead, we have to go back and play the E natural. So what I would like to do is spend some time getting our ear kind of used to hearing the sound of the E and the A sharp. That's also uh, called a tritone. I mean, intervals are like, this is a fifth. Uh, eh, somewhere in there. Uh, and this is a half step lower, and it's called a tritone because there are three whole steps between. Uh, between each of those. There's three whole steps between the A sharp and the E, is what I'm trying to say. So let's play that. First finger, E. Second finger, A sharp. So that is the note we're trying to hit at the end of measure number, the beginning of measure number 30. So that's what we want to hit. So to help with that, let us uh, also play. That's a. That's an octave higher than we want to go, but we could try it out. Um, and that is an A sharp from um, my doctor boss. There, see that nice guy? So that would be another way of getting that in tune. So let's just do that forwards and backwards. Um, the G, E, C sharp, A sharp, with this nice little device here. Got a fourth finger G. Here we go. There we go. Turn that off. And then we just have to add in the F sharp that comes after it to complete um, those two measures. So let's now play the first four measures of the B part, starting at measure 28, kind of slowly. Here we go. pause this for one second to take care of something. Uh, 
Um, there, I'm back. Uh, I had to pause it because I had a rice cooker that had rice in it, and the rice just finished. And you know how if you leave rice in the rice cooker for too long, it kind of burns? Or maybe you don't know that. But now you know that about me, that I make a lot of rice because I don't eat any wheat. All right, on to the show at hand here. We are in measure number 32. And now we have the interesting weirdness of going... <laughs> So that's kind of a challenge to the ear, to go from an F sharp to a G. And there's a number of ways of tackling that ear problem. Um, probably the best is to, like, your ear can easily hear an octave, right? So that would be a good thing to do. And G is a ringing tone. So let's begin our exploration of how in the world to play this by playing uh, a G natural, fourth finger on the D string, as kind of a ghost note. It's a note that helps us, but it's not the note that's in the music. So we're going to go a G natural, and then we shift up and match that pitch up here. Here we go again. So that is one option. That is a very strong option. It's a good way to do it. But we also know that it's going to be harder than that because we have to go from an F sharp to a G. But luckily, G is a ringing tone. So I think another thing that we could do is just find G. Uh, this uh, Out of the blue is what I call this exercise. I'm hitting a G every single time here. Uh, it's fairly easy. Fairly accurate. There, it's getting better. That is a very important exercise to do, just in general as a cello player. So I would do a lot of those. Uh, and then you can try going from different spots. choosing notes on the cello and then every other note is that G and so that means that we have a muscle memory of where G is and we can rely on that each time and then um, another thing that we can do is um, well we should do that now we should put that in place now we have an F sharp uh, is the last note in measure 32. There's the F sharp, and then we just find the G. Uh, the third thing that we can do, or is it the fourth thing? I can't remember. Is to, we've already done G to G octaves. Now we could do F sharp to F sharp. So we could go... It's a third finger F sharp and a third finger F sharp there. Um, that is a third or fourth thing that we can do to um, figure that out. So now let us put us in, put this in place and play measures 32 and 33. I believe it's a down bow, so it goes. Yeah, let's do that again. Um, and then let's look at the next one now. This is measure number 34. We are ending with an F sharp, but this time it's a first finger F sharp. And then we have an F sharp octave. So that's pretty easy. When I mean easy, I mean it's easy to hear. Another conceptual thing to think about is that uh, in the lower positions, your thumb and second finger are always together. And in this case, then, 
your second finger determines where the hand is, where the thumb is. And that's going to be on the note E. So we could just do that. All right, and that one's not too bad. So now let's just try that. Going. And again. One more time. There we go. Uh, and then in the next measure, we have an F sharp to an E, which is. in measure number 36 it looks like. Now that F sharp to E is easy because it's in the same position. So that's a good one to do with double stops. So let's try that bunch together. All right, having done that, let's just um, do the, um, the shifting work of doing the F sharp to the G, which we started with. Sorry, I did that wrong. That's where it is. That's where it is. And now we're going to do F sharp to F sharp. And then F sharp to E. It's kind of hard. So let's try it a couple of times here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the F sharp to the G, the last note in 32 to the first note in 33, <clears throat> and then the F sharp to the F sharp, which is the last note to the in 34 to then 35, and then the F sharp to the E, which is 36 to 37. All right, here we go, F sharp to G. <laughs> F sharp to F sharp, F sharp to E, all right, let's now look at the end of this uh, hard part, and that is measure 38. Um, we can simplify this by just doing first finger B, for that matter we could just go 4, 3, 1, right? This is in measure number 38. Now this um, practice technique is called simplifying. Uh, if we can play three notes in the same position, then that will calibrate our ear to hear it exactly how it should sound. And then we recreate that sound a little later with uh, the fingering that's written in the music. So let's go 4-3-1 a couple more times. <laughs> do it as uh, written. So it's a second finger D, first finger C sharp, and then we shift the fourth position for B. Let's try that a few times. All right, and then um, let's now add to it the G fourth finger, and then the uh, turn on A sharp and B. There we go. I think we should probably just tackle that much for this video. Um, so let's start at measure 28 and play it to measure 40. Let's do that a couple of times. Here we go. slightly faster. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, here we go.
that helps and I will do more of the B part in another video. Bye-bye.